What's going on, everybody? The original Mako back with some more Cult of the Lamb demo content. And you know what time it is. Tier list time, baby. I know it's just the demo, so obviously I can't do a full tier list, but I figured there's enough tarot cards in the game to do a tier list. There's probably enough weapons and probably enough spells to do a tier list as well, so you'll probably see some of those coming soon. But I wanted to start with the tarot cards because I've had a chance to use every single one of them. I think there's more tarot cards than there are weapons, or at least it's pretty close. Uh, same with spells, I think almost certainly more than spells. But regardless, I want to just go through, have some fun, make a tier list as we prepare for the full release of the game in like a month and a half. Uh, I'm super excited. Hopefully you guys are excited too. Before we get into the tier list, be sure you check the links down below. As always, if you want to see me play this game a little bit more on Twitch, discover some new things, um, as well as a bunch of other really cool games that are currently out or are coming out because of the steam next fest which has a ton of incredible demos that are out so um check it out i would really appreciate it as well as making sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the amazing content that is coming your way but let's go ahead and get into it shall we uh so i know you know you can't really see the descriptions very well so i will be reading them obviously so you know which one what each one does and why you know i'm putting it where i put it um since there's not a ton, I figured I wasn't going to add an F tier because then things would be too spread out. But D tier is bottom, bottom of the barrel for this tier list. Uh, so first up, we have Death's Door, which is when you're hit down to half a heart, every single enemy will be dealt to damage, which is, I believe, the same amount or just a little bit more than the diseased heart, which we'll talk about in a second. So it's, it's an okay amount of damage. Um, I don't believe it'll clear everything in the room. But it'll do a good chunk of damage when you're hit down to half a heart. So, um, sorry, my my mouse is being a little strange. Uh, Death's Door. I'm going to put it at, um, I'm going to put it at B. Because as like a, you know, last resort, oh my god, I'm about to get hit again. This can save you because you get hit once, you're panicking, you're, you're freaking out. All of a sudden, this damn near wipes the entire room. So it can save you, let you regain some composure, get back into it. Also, reprocable, because if you gain health back and then you go back down again, it'll happen again. So a repeated effect is going to have much higher of a priority than some other things on here, which is a one-time only type of deal. So I think I'm going to give this B tier. It's not the best thing in the world, but it is pretty good and will you know net you some, some good damage throughout the uh, course of your run. Next up, we have the Diseased Heart, which is, you just get a, a black heart, and if any of you have ever played Isaac, it works the exact same way as Isaac, where the black heart, um, when you get hit, it damages everything on, on the screen. Now, in Isaac, how it works is, um, when you get, the full heart goes away, that's when you, um, that's when everything gets damaged, because every hit takes half of a heart. Same thing here, every hit takes half of a heart, but every time that black heart gets hit, it'll proc, so it procs twice. Um, this is a one that does not wipe the room, but once again does a decent amount of damage, so it's good, but it's a one-time effect. You get one black heart, that's it, then the tarot card's not, it's useless from then on out, so... Um, once again, because it's not a repeatable effect, it's going to go into C tier, but it is pretty good because it's, you know, it's the best type of heart that you can have. I mean, red hearts can be refilled. This can't, but it, it does damage for you, which is pretty pog. Any source of damage is a good source of damage. Next up, we have a divine curse, which is curses consume 25% less for Vower. Um, so curses are the spells in the game. And every time you use one, it uses a certain amount of your mana, or for Vower, in this case. And most spells, at least every spell that I've used in the game um, that's out right now, costs... It'll show you how many charges you have, and for every spell so far, you get three charges. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a scenario where one spell is crazy and costs a lot more, and you'll get less charges. So, for this one... It really kind of depends on the spell you're using. All the spells in the game right now, I mean, it's pretty good with them because you get to use less. I believe it nets you one extra charge. But at the same time, you know, if there's a spell that 
maybe isn't as useful that you're able to spam, it's not going to be as good. But if there's a spell in the full release of the game that's like a big mega nuke and it costs all of your fervor or fervour and it ends up costing 25% less because of the divine curse, or I guess a better example would be something that has two charges, netting a third charge of that would be super useful. So it really just depends on the spell. For all the spells in the game right now, it's good. Um, it's not... Okay, I'll do that. Uh, it's not, once again, the best thing in the world, but because it's a repeatable effect, and it definitely will get you more value than Death's Door, I'm going to put it in B tier and above Death's Door. Um... Spells are pretty good in the game, so the more charges you can get, the better. And actually, now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm going to move it into A tier, I think, because of how good spells can be. So, A tier for Divine Curse. Uh, next up, we have Divine Strength, which is the attack rate is increased by 1.25%. Um, yeah, this one, this one's going A tier right above. It's a pretty good A tier, probably pushing S. If you know me, you know that I love fast attack speed in games. Don't ask me why. I just love spamming, whether it's a FPS, a, a hack and slash, whatever it is. I love attack speed. So this one for me is an A tier. It it makes you can definitely tell a difference. Um, and even if you're using the big boy axe, which doesn't have a lot of attack speed, this will give you uh, a good chunk more of the attack speed, and you can definitely tell a difference. You're just killing things quicker, getting getting threats off the screen quicker. It's just all around a really really good thing. And once again. It's a repeatable effect, so this lasts the entirety of the run. You're going to have constant attack speed increase. Uh, next up is Fervour's Harvest. Uh, enemies will drop double the amount of Fervour. Uh, this one is A tier and a better, in my opinion, than Divine Curse. Uh, enemies dropping double the amount of mana to refill your mana pool that would, they would normally drop is really, really useful and will net you a lot of extra charges throughout a run of your spell. So it's really good. I don't think it's quite as good as the attack speed because you're still going to be using your weapon more than spells, most likely. Maybe not, but most likely. So that's why I have that a little bit higher, but for Vower's Harvest is still a very, very good uh, tarot card to have. Next up, we have Fortune's Blessing. You receive double the health when healing. Um, this one's going to go B tier and behind Death's Door. Uh, I don't know, I'm not, maybe it's just because the demo's not super long, so, you know, you don't get to go into a, any of the crazy hard areas. I'm sure with more difficult areas, this is going to become better, but I, I can't test that. I can't use it in more difficult areas um, until the full game releases. So as of right now, uh, it's not just not super useful. Mm, doubling the amount of healing is nice, but but there's not that many cases when I would ha rather have that over something else right now. Once again, this is very likely to change in the full release of the game, but for now, uh, you know, this is maybe a later later game uh, tarot card you'd want in some of the later dungeons, not the early ones. So I'll put it B tier because it is repeatable effect that every time you heal, this will proc, but as of right now, I would say Death's Door would probably get you more value. So that's why that's going to go into B tier and behind Death's Door. Next up, we have Gift from Below, a 10% chance of gaining a soul heart when killing an enemy. So this is the blue heart in the game, which, once again, very similar to Isaac. Um, it's a heart that can't be refilled, but it's just an extra, uh, it's kind of like a shield in, in some games, if you will. Um, so a 10% chance every time you kill an enemy of gaining a soul heart. This one is... I don't know if I want to put it into A tier or B tier. I'm going to put it into A. Um, so gift from below, a, a, every time you kill an enemy, you have a chance to just gain an extra soul heart. So if you're able to, you know, kill 10 enemies without taking damage, free health. Kill another 10 without taking damage, free health. Essentially, you might get more or less than that, but about one out of every 10 enemies is going to drop you a soul heart. Constant repeatable healing is super, super useful and really good in any game ever. So this is this is really good. Once again, it's not going to affect your runs nearly as much as this other stuff, which is why I'm putting it back a little bit. But once again, this could be a really big deal in later dungeons that are a little bit harder to run through. So uh, that's why I'm going to put it there. I don't know. It, it, it probably deserves to be a little bit higher, but 
just because of the demo version of the game, you don't get to try those later dungeons. It's going to stay right there for now. Uh, next up, we have the Master of the Art, which is overall weapon damage increased by 1.2%. This, for the same exact reason as, like, Divine Strength, you're swinging your weapon all the time, and having a constant 1.2% damage increase, is, or 1.2 times damage increase, is just great. I mean, you just it's just fantastic. So, I still like attack speed better, but if you're somebody who just likes big, meaty hits... Whipping out those big claws, slamming your meat on the table and saying, here we go, it's dinner time, baby, ringing the dinner bell, here we go. Then you'll probably like this a little bit more than the attack speed, but it just it's more of a play style thing. But both are very good, is the point we're trying to make here. Next up is Rabbit's Foot. Increases the chance to spawn better chests. Uh, this one's going to go B tier, but it's going to go towards the top of B tier because better chests, you know, it's basically just a luck increase. They can be really good, um, and I'm sure for, once again, the full release, when you can actually do stuff at base, uh, getting better chests that have either more materials, more blueprints, um, is pretty pog, as well as, for your dungeon runs, getting more chests that have weapons and spells, so, um, from what I've seen, I've only gotten to use this a couple times, but it does seem to make a, a, a decent increase in your chest luck, so... I'm going to put it in B tier, but towards the top of B tier, for sure. Next up, we have Shield of Faith. When attacked, a 10% chance of just straight up negating damage. Um, so this one is going to go right at the top of B tier. Uh, it's behind Gift from Below, because here's how, here's how I think of it. So with Shield of Faith, it's good, but it's one out of every times, one out of every 10 times you get hit you won't lose half a heart of damage, uh, statistically. With this, it's one out of every ten enemies you kill, you are going to get a full heart of healing. Um, so, not only are you getting more value with Gift from Below, but theoretically, you should probably be killing ten enemies faster than you're getting hit ten times. If you know what I'm trying to say here so the value that you get from gift from below in my opinion is going to be far superior to the value from um shield of faith now once again later on down the line there's probably going to be some enemies that hit for more than half a heart a heart maybe a heart and a half who knows with the difficulty so this might be better but for now it's just not as good so i'm not going to put it on the same tier as gift from below and gift from below is clearly the better option uh, next up, we have Telescope, Reveal the Map. For now, this is this is D tier. <laughs> uh, for right now, this is D tier, because once again, there's not a lot of content. This isn't, I, I, I can't assume things in the future, but right now, the dungeons aren't very long. Uh, there's there's six, seven rooms, maybe, per per area. So revealing the map, you're probably exploring every room anyway. And if not, it takes maybe an extra five minutes to explore the extra rooms. Maybe not even. So for the demo version of the game, revealing the map is just not super useful. Pretty much everything else on this list you'd rather have. Uh, but for the full release, that could change. Next up, we have the Arachnid, which I don't even need to read it, but um, deals poison damage to enemies struck. Every enemy you hit takes poison damage. S tier. It's S tier. It's it's inflicting a damage over time on every single enemy you hit is very good. It's very good. Um, this thing will will start once again. All you have to do is hit an enemy. Uh, let's say you're doing a boss fight. Now this isn't how you know the, the first boss after you get used to his mechanics aren't super difficult, but theoretically. You hit with the arachnid, and then you, all you have to do is focus on dodging. As soon as the poison's done, get one sword swing in again, let the damage over time tick, focus on dodging. It's just having that every single time you hit an enemy, giving giving an extra damage over time, you're going to kill enemies quicker, you're going to be able to focus more on dodging because you're still doing damage even when you're not swinging. It's just, it, it's really good. Now, the damage in this game isn't crazy. It's not like you poison an enemy and all of a sudden they're they're health bars getting absolutely slaughtered but 
a repeatable damage over time effect that is on every single enemy all the time, it's pretty good. <laughs> so S tier for our boy, the Arachnid. Next up, we have uh, the Hearts. Is that? Yeah, the Hearts. Uh, gain an extra half of a heart. Now, I do want to point something out that I think is very important about this, because obviously this is going into D tier, getting one extra half heart. I know it's a refillable heart, but it's still only half a heart. This is very different from every other tarot card we've talked about so far. This one and the next one are different because this says the hearts won. So I'm assuming that means it's tier one. So going into other dungeons, there could be the hearts tier two, tier three, which gives you more health as opposed to just half a heart. So if you're getting two full hearts when you have like the hearts four, for example... That's pretty good. Two full refillable hearts is pretty good value. So, once again, it kind of depends on the situation you're in, but for now, when this is the only version of this card in the game, I'm going to give it a, a D tier along... Well, actually, this next one I'm going to give C tier. Uh, the Lovers, which is you gain plus one soul heart, just because you get plus one of an entire heart. I don't know if you can tell, but I value the total health as opposed to refillable health most of the time. So that's where those two are going to go. Once again, they both are tier one. These two are the only two that have a tier next to their name. So once again, hopefully there's, theoretically there should be more versions of it uh, later in the game. And last but certainly not least, we have True Sight, which is a 10% chance to deal a critical hit every time you swing. So if we're basing this how we based all the other 10 percenters here, um, this one's going to go up to, th up above the other two, but I'm also going to bump it above Divine Curse as well. I don't think it's quite as good as for Vower's Harvest, because once again, spells are nuts, but I do think it's a little better than Divine Curse, because you'll get a little more value, I think. So once again, if we use our same logic, where this should not be happening, you shouldn't be getting hit 10 times before you kill 10 enemies, well, you're going to hit an enemy or enemies 10 times before you kill 10 enemies. So once again, it's just increased value. And crit damage is pretty nuts. If you have one of those big axes that you can't swing very fast, but you hit hard, and you crit, it, you're, you're decapitating an enemy's health bar in one go. Just whoop, see ya. So the damage you get is pretty, pretty crazy. And if you combine that with one of the weapons that has built-in crit, or a built-in potential to crit, I should say, then it just uh, expands your value even farther. So I think this is pretty good for a tier list. Um, it's always fun to talk about, you know, I, I know the game's not fully out yet, but I'm really excited for it. And uh, eventually there's, I think there's 30 something tarot cards as of right now. I'm sure there's going to be maybe even more on for, for release. Um, or sorry, there's 30, there's 30 that you can see in the game. There's only like 15 you have unlocked. Um, so there could be more eventually, uh, same with weapons. There's a good chunk right now, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more when the full release comes out. So we'll have a ton of fun videos to make. I'm planning on making a tier list for the weapons, um, as well as spells in the, in the pre-release or in the demo. Also, I have a fun video coming out soon on, for Cult of the Lamb on a secret boss that you can kill and get a... I haven't, I only did it once, I haven't been able to find it again, so I don't know if the blueprint you get is, like, coded to be, hard-coded for that specific blueprint, like, in order to get this blueprint, you have to kill this secret boss, or if it's more of a, you just get a blueprint for killing the boss, but regardless, I'll have a video on that soon as well, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of this crazy Cult of the Lamb content that is coming straight to your faces at a rapid pace as well as all the other videos I'll be making. Uh, I'd appreciate if you check those out as well. So thank you guys so much. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below if you've had a chance to, you know, spam this game like I have. But uh, thank you for all the support as always. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I love each and every one of your faces, and I will catch you all in the next video.